Is this another case of a reputable brand using their good name to sell a subpar boot like we've seen with Carhartt and some of these other brands? Or does DeWalt make a pretty decent entry level boot for that just over a hundred dollar price range? Well, today we're gonna cut this one in half to see what's on the inside and see what kind of boot DeWalt makes. And thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And if you don't know what a VPN is, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It's a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. And the way it does it is it creates an encrypted tunnel for your data, protecting your online identity by hiding your IP address and allows you to use public Wi-Fi hotspots safe. VPNs sound pretty confusing, but the nice thing about NordVPN is it's super easy to use. You can connect with one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection. And VPNs aren't just for online security and protection. NordVPN also helps you find streaming platforms at a lower price. And if a platform isn't available in your country, simply change your virtual location, which also allows you to watch content that might not be available in your area. And if you're like us at the shop, I, I feel like we always have our bandwidth throttled by our internet provider. The nice thing about NordVPN is it encrypts all your traffic so your internet service provider can't slow down your streaming speeds. And on top of that, NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there. So whether you're trying to improve your internet security or you're just trying to get some extra content on some streaming services, NordVPN is a good way to do it. So get an exclusive NordVPN deal by using the link in the description or by going to nordvpn.com slash roseanvil. And it's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So check them out below. Thanks again to NordVPN. So now let's go over the boot information. So the brand is DeWalt, the style is Flex, the color is Sundance, they weigh one pound nine ounces, they retail for $124 and they're made in China. Now let's go over the information that we can gather about this boot before we cut it in half, starting with the leather. So the upper leather is a nubuck leather, which basically means they sand the top layer of the leather. It's usually smooth to give it a nice, uh, almost suede texture to it that help, is allegedly helps prevent scratches and stuff from happening. But at this point it's just, that Timberland classic work boot style and so everyone does it. But it's a chrome tan leather and it, it varies in thickness from about two millimeters up to 2.5 millimeters thick, which is pretty common for a work boot in this price range. So it's not the best leather out there, but it's also not the worst. I think it's fine for the price. And then next to the lining, and linings in these cheaper work boots are some of my, my favorite parts of the videos because they use so much marketing jargon to spin just cheap linings. For instance, in, the, in this DeWalt boot, they call it their aerospace mesh lining for comfort and breathability. I'm not fully sure what is so aerospace about like a, it almost looks like a jersey material like a, ba a basketball jersey material but apparently it's aerospace uh, beginning roll program. so we'll see maybe there's something hiding on the inside that we're not aware of so we'll see if we get it cut in half and then onto the construction so you might look at this and, and assume it's a goodyear welted construction because you see a welt on the outside and you see the stitching there but if you look really close and you just pull that upper back away from the welt you can see that it's glued together which doesn't mean it's not Goodyear welted, but usually you don't see glue on a Goodyear welted boot. So I'm assuming it's just like the Brunts where it's it's made to look like a higher quality Goodyear welted boot, when in all reality, it's just a fake welt that's glued on to a cheaper boot and it's just a cemented boot, which, which is annoying because they're already using the DeWalt name to sell the product, but then they're also using the appearance of a higher quality boot to sell a cemented boot, which is just obnoxious. And that was that's what was so irritating to me about some of these other boots, and like especially the Brunts, where they they advertise them as this this working man's boot, this boot that you can rely on, and and they take a cheap boot and dress it up to make it look like a higher quality boot, and then you get it, and it's just not a great boot. And then if we move to the insole, let's get this pulled out once again. Great marketing jargon. This is the Pro Comfort insole with ergonom ergonomic arch support. Which it is, it's an okay insole. I don't know where the arch support's coming from. I guess maybe this little lip here. Uh, yeah, I just, I love all the marketing. Even on here it says antibacterial, hill cushion, wicks moisture, breathable. You know, it's, they're just funny. Oh, on the bottom, cushion zone, arch support. I love it. And then underneath of the insole, we can see that it's a fiberboard lasting board, which is exactly what you'd expect from this price range. Then if we move to the outsole, so this is an oil and slip resistant wedge sole. If we do a quick durometer test, it comes in at a 69 to 71 ish shore A, so a fairly hard outsole. And the thing I thought was kind of interesting is it has these little cutouts to make it a little more flexible, make, make it a little bit more grippy, because a lot of times with these wedge sole, they get those vibrant wedge soles as soon as they're worn for 100 miles 
it's completely flat and they're prone to hydroplaning out of control. And another thing about this outsole is it's a dual density outsole where you've got the harder rubber on the bottom, softer EVA foam above that is this, is this slider layer. And it, it comes in at a 42 short A. So you get the durability and grip of the harder bottom with the comfort and squish of, of the EVA foam above that. The only problem with this is a lot of times with these dual density outsoles, they're prone to splitting apart where those two layers meet, especially at the toe where you're kicking things around. And once you've worn through the rubber, especially at the heel, you start wearing into that really soft foam and that durability just goes out the window. You, you wear through this soft of foam quicker than you might expect. So it's a pro and con either way. Do you take the extra comfort of the, the dual density or would you rather have the durability of a solid blown rubber outsole like the Vibra? But fortunately it's guaranteed tough. So um, that's everything we can figure out before cut it in half. So let's cut it in half. But the one thing I, I do like about these composite shanks is they're significantly easier to cut through on the bandsaw. Band saw. So let's see what's inside. So now we can better see the steel toe on the inside here and more importantly the aerospace lining. And it is actually kind of an interesting material because it's almost like a three dimensional fabric where you've got that jersey type material on the outside and there's little fibers on the inside that give the lining a little bit of squish which is, which is it is a pretty cool material I don't know if it actually does anything for the functionality of the boot and the breathability but it is it is kind of a unique material and we can also see that this counter cover is a fiberboard counter cover which isn't the best counter cover out there but I would still take it way over just a fabric lining because it's gonna be a little while before you wear through this compared to just fabric. But the real issue with this boot is that it is as we feared. It is a cemented construction boot and this welt on the outside is fake. It doesn't actually sew anything together. So the only thing holding this glue, this boot together is glue. And for a work boot made by a brand that says the tool you, the tool you trust all day, every day, I wouldn't want to trust glue to hold my entire boot together, especially for $125. But not all glues are created equal. Some cemented boots are cemented very well. So let's see if I can rip this thing apart and see how well it's glued. Oh no. I, I always think they're gonna rip and then they don't. This happens every time. Today's the day, DeWalt. Gotta stand up. It's gonna go. Ooh. So, not the easiest boot I've torn apart, but still fairly easy. And for a dedicated work boot, made by a brand that's it's renowned for their high quality uh, tools. Anytime you go to a, a construction site, it's almost always DeWalt tools. And so to have a really easy to tear apart boot that they are using that name to sell is disappointing. And this is the reason why you want that Goodyear welt and you want that stitching holding these together because there's no way you can, you, I guess if you're strong enough, you can tear a thread apart, but glue is so much easier to tear apart, especially after you've worn it for a long time and they've been hot in the, on the asphalt or on roofs all day. It's only a matter of time before that a little teeny separation turns the whole boot falling apart. And we've all seen it. We've all had a pair of boots like this where 
they've fallen apart. And so it's a bummer that it was that easy to tear apart. And the thing is, there's 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 better boots out there for the same price point or cheaper. You got Jim Greens, we've, we've cut apart many Ariats, there's the Rock Roosters, and even the cats that we cut apart with Stridewise that were less than $100, at least were, were Goodyear welted. With It was a plastic welt, but it was Goodyear welted and glued, and it was under 100 bucks. And I'd way rather have that than this DeWalt boot. So to me, this is once again, another textbook example of a good brand using their reputable name to sell a subpar product to people that that they're relying on. You know, like they're not selling these to people that wear them for, for fashion. They're selling DeWalt boots to the people who buy their DeWalt tools and are expecting DeWalt quality. And I think they should be embarrassed of that. And I would say don't buy these boots, avoid them like the plague. They're just not good. So let me know what you guys think. And if you've owned a pair of these, I'm curious if you've had this problem with the glue just kind of delaminating. And let me know your thoughts on this and thank you so much for watching. I've actually really enjoyed tearing apart some of these more work construction style boots made by these brands. So if this is interesting to you, be sure to comment and like and subscribe and all that thing, all those other things to uh, help this video out so I can keep making more of them. And thank you guys for everything. See ya.